Hi, this is Mary Hood again, coming to you with a series of short video clips that are meant for people who are just getting started at homeschooling or people who are still considering it. Yesterday I did one on getting uh, legal and learning about the laws and so forth, and today I'm going to do one on relaxed record keeping or just record keeping in general uh, that kind of correlates with the first one. All right. Now, you will find that there's vast difference between states when it comes to how much uh, record keeping requirements there are. All right, some states you'll find we're going to require a lot more than what I'm just suggesting right now. You also may have more requirements if you go under a some kind of a cover school or something like that. If you uh, if you join in with a private school set up and you of course certainly will if you choose some kind of a uh, public school at home uh, set up, which to me is not really genuine homeschooling anyway. But at any rate, so in some cases you may need a lot more than I'm saying in some cases you may need less but what I really recommend is if you do belong uh, if you do homeschool in a state that has a very minimal record keeping uh, requirement make sure you do at least what I'm describing here it's very important that you have some records so that if you ever need to communicate what you're doing what you've been doing with any kind of authorities or even with just somebody like your mother-in-law uh, it's, it's much easier to do if it is uh, in, in, rec in a record that's actually written down somewhere. And keep in mind that if anybody ever does run into any issues in, with homeschooling, it's typically with the social services department, which doesn't have to scare you. And if it does, I've mentioned before, you might want to join Homeschool Legal Defense Association, uh, especially if you have some kind of an issue with an extremely nosy neighbor or somebody else that you think might, might be wanting to report you, an ex-spouse ex or something like that. But normally, I wouldn't, say be, I wouldn't be concerned about it, but you do want to be able to have enough records to be able to remind yourself what you were doing so you can discuss it intelligently with anybody uh, for whatever reason. So the first thing I want you to do, and this is really uh, non-negotiable, you have to do this, is to keep some kind of a calendar. I highly, highly, highly recommend an actual calendar, a, a written record that you have in your hands, not just something on the computer. All right. And the main purpose for this calendar is to record instructional days. Now, most states require a certain number. It's typically 180, but that may vary from one state to another. Uh, it's often a certain amount of hours. In Georgia, it happens to be four and a half hours, I believe. Um, it, but, and again, that four and a half hours doesn't necessarily have to be sitting at a desk, you know, pounding textbooks. It just means it's instructional. It's educational. If you're at the zoo, for example, that might be an educational day. Certainly, public schools take field trips also. All right? But you do want to watch things like um, doing a lot of errands during the day, running around. So somebody might say, hey, I don't think they're really homeschooling because I keep running into her at the grocery store. Now remember that you don't have to keep the same schedule the public schools do. So if one day you really have a lot of errands to run in the morning, there's nothing that says that you couldn't start your homeschool day at two o'clock in the afternoon and run till however many hours the, the estate requires in your, in your area. Um, you also don't have to keep the same calendar. You can start later. We often start it after Labor Day. You can continue on longer into summer if you need it to catch up on some days. You can take different vacations. You can switch your spring break to a genuine Easter break. You know, you could take off the entire month of December if you wanted to uh, in order to properly prepare for and celebrate Christmas. You know, you can do all sorts of things. It's very creative, but the, you do need to pay attention to the actual days that you're required uh, to, to do homeschooling and make sure that on your calendar it's clearly marked what you were counting and what you weren't counting. You know, we decided to take these two weeks as vacation and then we decided to catch up with these three Saturdays in a row and so forth. Just make sure you have that all done in the calendar and then don't lose the calendar. <laughs> um, and then the second thing is keeping a track of library books. Uh, this can be as simple as when you go to the library, they often give you a, a, a list of the books. Just date it up at the top and slip it into a file folder. All right. Um, that way, if anybody ever again calls you to task for anything, most homeschoolers read a lot of books, all right? And even just the books that you've read over the course of the year will impress most educators uh, because, you know, often they don't have enough time to do as much reading as they would like to do in the public school these days. And if you've read a lot of books and read them to the children and had them learning to read and everything, and you might want to get some kind of a system, especially of young ones that where you where you're marking this one as a read aloud and this one as one that, that so-and-so was actually reading on her own and so forth. But have that list of books. Now, to me, those are the two absolute essentials. The third thing I recommend is some kind of a journal. 
Uh, this can be on the computer if it works better for you. It can be once a week. It doesn't have to be every day. It just has to be some kind of system that you that that works for you and that you follow through and make it into a habit. So you don't what you don't again want to wind up doing is have two months gone by and you haven't written anything down. Now, if you're doing a more traditional approach and you can say this particular math book, pages 1 through 36, week 1, and so forth, that's fine. But if you're a little more family-like, get into my relaxed homeschooling thing, and y then you need to also write down things like the gardening project you're doing and how you were talking about pH and you sent off to the county extension to have your soil tested and you were talking about the role of the beneficial insects and so forth, or the birdhouse you, you uh, made and the learning center you set up to identify birds and so forth. Just whatever you're doing, this is where you're just kind of writing down what you did. And again, for me, I didn't do it every day. I did it once a week, but it was always there. And then at the very end of the year, whether you're required to or not, I recommend to do one of two things. Either write a sort of a summary report, uh, which you can you know, just say, in social studies th this year, we focused on um, American history, you know, we did this, this, and this, we took a couple of field trips, you know, all that sort of thing. Just write it down summary style for every subject that's required by law. Uh, or if, if they don't have subjects required by law, then kind of split them into the typical, you know, English, math, social studies, science, and whatever else. Um, but anyway, to have that, or if you prefer, a scrapbook approach can work also. And this is especially kind of fun if you have things like playbills from, from plays you went to or uh, concerts you went to or, or pictures of projects and so forth. So if you'd rather do it scrapbook style, some people are, are really into that. And tell you, that's fun to look at later. If, if you never need it for any, anything else, I've run into a few scrapbooks I did from early on, and it's just really fun to look back and, and remember all of that, okay? Now, I have written one book on this called Relaxed Record Keeping, all right? And this has a lot of very specific samples. Like here's one of a, of a summary report. I don't know if you can see that or not. A summary report that I had there. Uh, examples of little uh, notations that I made in the various, um, in the various journals th that I had. Uh, so if you're interested in that, right now my website is down. Uh, if it comes back up again, my website is usually www.archers, A-R-C-H-E-R-S, for F O R the Lord dot org. I also just got the domain name Relaxed Homeschooling with Mary Hood dot com, and I may start making use of that. Right now, though, if you want anything that you see of mine and you can't find it online, which you probably can't with these note with these these little booklets, uh, the best thing to do is to email me at Mary dot E dot Hood at Gmail dot com. Uh, if you haven't already, please join the um, Facebook group Relaxed Homeschooling with Mary Hood, and uh, also, if you will subscribe, there should be a red subscribe button down in the lower, um, that corner, that corner, <laughs> the lower right corner of this. Please click on and subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the more this is going to be searchable for people that need to, to see it. So if you're watching this on Facebook or some other place, I'd appreciate it if you run over to YouTube real quick and subscribe over there. Uh, that's it for today, I think. Um, and I am going to stop putting these on my personal Facebook page after today. So if anybody wants to continue to see them, and I will be continuing with a whole bunch of how-tos, I will continue to put them in our Facebook group, Relaxed Homeschooling with Mary Hood, which is a private group. Um, and so you can join there and see them there or preferably go straight to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not sure exactly the link, but I think it's basically YouTube dot whatever, you know, and then there's a forward slash. I think it's just relaxed homeschooler. That's the actual link, or you can get there from one of these videos. All right, that's it for today. And again, from now on, I won't be putting them on my personal Facebook page. This is the last one. I don't want to wind up being put in Facebook jail for looking like I'm a, a commercial entity, even though this is really a nonprofit uh, that no one's making any money off of. Uh, but I will be putting them in our group and continuing on the YouTube for at least 10 or so more videos, and then I may start back off only doing one a week or so. All right, thanks very much.